Is this the return of the ASBO? The government has announced a crackdown on antisocial behaviour with a new respect order to tackle issues such as e-scooters on pavements, which are very annoying, I have to say. People get very, very cross about it, times. yeah. Problem drinkers, uh, also in town centres particularly, and being able to seize off-road bikes. Well, Home Secretary Yvette Cooper joins us now. Good morning to you. So, we have a new Labour government. And of course, good morning, Kate. Good, good morning, Paul. Good morning. And your respect orders, which you're piloting, I understand, currently, are reminding people immediately of ASBOs, which ultimately were seen not to work, didn't reduce targets on, didn't get to the targets on reoffending. So, why are you adopting a failed playbook? Well, these are a modernised version, effectively, of ASBOs, because what happened was the Conservatives uh, removed those powers and then uh, weakened the powers available for tackling antisocial behaviour. We have seen in recent years a combination of the uh, removal of neighbourhood police from many of our town centres and communities, and also this big increase in things like street theft and shoplifting in recent years, and an increase in people saying that they are seeing antisocial behaviour in their local area. And we shouldn't stand for this. So what the respect orders do is they allow the police to be able to apply for bans for repeat persistent offenders from town centres, for example, and to have a power of arrest if those orders are breached. It also includes some other elements around things like being able to follow up with drug treatment orders and other kinds of response as well. Because we just think that we need more police back on our business and they need to have the, the powers that they need to be able to take action. I mean, it sounds good, and people like the idea of ASBOs initially, but I suppose my question was, they, they were breached and they didn't succeed in stopping re-offending, and in many cases, people argued that they became a badge of honour. So how is this different and why do you think it'll work? Well, I think some of the problems that, that arose in the past were about uh, using ASBOs around teenagers, where actually you need different kinds of interventions. This is just for adults. We do believe this is the right thing to do. Of course, it won't be the, the most appropriate thing to do in every circumstance, but we just think that the police need to have more powers and more mix of things for the police and local councils working together. We're also changing the, the rules around shoplifting, getting rid of this ludicrous £200 rule, for example, we're, which means that lower level of uh, shoplifting doesn't get investigated, even if it's a repeat. And we're bringing in the new powers that you referred to on things like off-road bikes or dangerous e-scooters that are being used on pavements, so that instead of this repeat warning process that the police have to go through at the moment, they can take action straight away where they've got antisocial behaviour taking place and can seize bikes where necessary as well. You've got to have that mix of powers because I don't think people should have to put up with the kind of antisocial behaviour that we're seeing in communities at the moment. Now, the police have a lot on their plate at the moment, though, Home Secretary. I wonder what you make of reports in the newspapers this morning about these non-crime hate incidents and how you feel about the amount of police time being spent on them. I mean, we're told that some of them include things like people saying that their hair was badly cut because they were uh, of the wrong nationality. We've got people being compared to Rottweiler dogs because they're German, saying that that is a, a racial abuse incident. People whistling Bob the Builder being told that they're being racist too. Is this really what police should be spending their time on? Well, we've been very clear that the policing priorities should be uh, neighbourhood policing, those kinds of local town centre issues that really matter, and we're determined to get more neighbourhood police on the beat, but also some of the most serious violence, violence against women and girls and knife crime, the most serious crimes that we face. So, when I spoke at a policing conference earlier this week, I was clear those are the priorities for uh, the police. And there is already guidance. I think you've got to take a, a common sense approach to some of the sorts of the stories that, that you were talking about. You've really got to have a, a common sense approach, and that's what the, the guidance already says that the police yeah, have I to think the follow problem common is there sense, are, sorry not to interrupt deal you, with Secretary. trivial incidents. I think the problem mm. is, is the common sense leaves open for concern that there isn't a clear line nationally. Mm. You know, for police, if police don't investigate something and it then 
you know, turns out to have been something more sinister underneath, then they're in the wrong. If they do investigate something, then they're perhaps ridiculed and taking time away from other more serious offences. So, you know, it's all very well to say a common sense approach, but people are looking at these things and think, well, clearly this is not being applied. Well, there, there is guidance in place for the police and there's also... There's been an inspectorate report that looked at some of those kinds of incidents over the summer, said actually the guidance isn't being followed in the most consistent way. And so we do think you've got to have the common sense approach, you've got to have a consistent approach, but also make sure that the priority for policing is the things like the town centre stuff, things like the serious knife crime and violence as well. And I think, look, you, you are right, probably the, the police do find in any individual operation, and that's for them to make judgments on any individual operation, then they can have people criticising them from all sides. But I think, to be honest, the police right across the country uh, take most seriously the issues around keeping communities safe, keeping the public safe. That's what police officers are working across the country to do at the moment. And our job at the government's role is to make sure they've got the powers to do so and also that we get more neighbourhood police, because that is what we're missing at the moment. They've been heavily cut back. All right, well, another big call for the police and for the government, indeed, is whether or not the UK would arrest the Prime Minister of Israel, because the International Criminal Court has now put out an arrest warrant for him and also his former Defence Secretary, also the leader of Hamas, although we're, never, we're not sure whether or not he's even still alive. But the way this works is that the International Criminal Court can't arrest him. UK police would have to arrest him if he came here, or indeed other police if he went to other nations. Will British police arrest Benjamin Netanyahu if he comes to Britain? Well, that's not a matter for the Home Secretary. The International Criminal Court is, of course, independent. It has its processes that it needs to follow. In the overwhelming majority of International Criminal Court cases, they never become a matter for the British legal process, for the British law enforcement or for the British government. No, but if he comes in here... The, I'm so, uh, sorry, Home Secretary, that, Home Secretary, you are, as, you are in charge after, of the police. Yeah, you are finish. in charge of the police and you can uh, send a very strong signal to the police. I appreciate you're saying that police are operationally independent of government, but come on, you know, if you send a strong uh, signal to the police saying he should be arrested when he comes here, it's likely that he would be arrested. If you send the opposite signal, he probably won't be arrested. What is your personal view? Is it right for police to potentially arrest Benjamin Netanyahu if he comes to the United Kingdom? Well, I've just finished the, the point I was just going to, to finish uh, a second ago, Paul, which is that in the case, the event that international criminal court cases do become a matter for the UK, which is rare, but if they do, in those circumstances, there are uh, legal processes and government processes that need to be followed and they need to be done in the proper way. And that's why it would not be appropriate for me as Home Secretary to comment on speculative processes because it's important that those are followed. But, look, there's a wider issue here. The International Criminal Court has to uh, do its processes. We respect their independence. But there's also the UK foreign policy approach, which is that we continue to believe that we need a ceasefire in Gaza. We've obviously seen uh, okay. significant uh, challenges really right across the Middle East ever yeah. since the Hamas terrorist attack on Israel on October the 7th last year. We continue to pursue a ceasefire in Gaza. OK. I mean, number 10 uh, have said that they would comply with the ICC and they would comply with that recommendation if he was to be arrested. So are you in disagreement with number 10? Are you saying that Britain wouldn't comply? Or are you just saying we're kicking it into the long grass? No, I'm saying we respect the independence of the International Criminal Court. We respect international law. That is what we have always made clear. That is what, uh, number 10, the government, the Prime Minister, have made clear. All I'm saying to you is in the majority of cases, uh, these don't become a matter for the UK. In the cases where they do, there are proper legal processes and government processes that have to be followed. And it would just be wrong for me as Home Secretary to comment in advance of any process on any right. individual okay. case. So we're not going to get a yes or no on that, Home Secretary. What about assisted dying? We're all one of the last cabinet There's members to... There's a proper to... process and you would recognise that. OK. Assisted dying, you're one of the last cabinet members to declare your position or be asked about your position on this. Will you vote for the assisted dying bill when it comes before Parliament on uh, next Friday? 
Well, I have voted for change in the past. I think these are, are important and difficult issues, um, and uh, I haven't changed my view on the, the principles of this issue. But I do also recognise that there is a, a detailed debate to be had on the detail of legislation, on the kinds of safeguards and, and things that, that need to be in place. Yeah. I'll continue so, to follow that debate like everybody else, okay. but I don't think it's... Uh, we, as you know, that we, I think we've been clear that this is a matter for Parliament and but you're an MP, uh, so to decide next you're, week. you're an MP. Which way are you going to vote as an MP? Yes or, or no to assisted dying? Do you think at the moment? Which way are you leaning? So I'd say I, I continue to support the principle of needing change, but also to ensure that we've got the proper safeguards and, and systems in place, and that so will be that the matter a yes for the debate Friday in Parliament or... next Friday. Sorry. So is that a yes next Friday? So that is going... a uh, that's a that's a. I've... Sorry, Kate. No, you carry on. No, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I, I, look, um, I've lot. This we last voted. I think I last voted on this about twenty years ago, and so I have uh, supported the principle in the past and continue to believe that that change is needed. But we do need to have that debate on the detail, and I'll continue to follow that debate for next Friday. Okay, okay. Home Secretary. Thank you very much. So. A tentative yes, Thanks, I think, thank you, Kate. to assisted dying. Thank you, thank, thank you very you. much indeed. A tentative I yes, I think. If you sit yes. there and listen to the debate and make a mind up on Friday. I mean, there are important details to the mm. bill. I think that's fair enough. Mm. You do have to look at the detail. But I think, sort of by now, especially if you're a vet Cooper, you've been an MP for that long, you mm. probably know where you are on it, really, don't you? I think it's the government's just getting a bit nervous about the amount of divisions within government. Yeah, I think. absolutely.